Hey guys, it's JH. Welcome to Practice Tea. Okay, we're gonna go over some some uh, some reinforcing stuff today. To give you metal images, once once we've established the address position, which is really important. We really just want to feel like the club and the trail arm are in a straight line. That shoulder's there, here. That we could do that. When you can do that, guys, when you can actually do that with your arm and the golf club and it comes past your right foot like that, directly back, you know you're in the right place. If you're here, <laughs> the club would run into you, all right? So th this is one of the checkpoints. If you put it there, and you can actually bring it straight back from the ball like that you're in the right place if we're lining up on a target there which is my feet line are square I've got the camera a little bit offset today so it'll give you probably a better indication of the difference in the in the body line now if I if I'm aiming you know here to a target there the balls on that line which is dead dead pair two railway lines guys one there and one here the balls on one arm on the other well, what we're going to do here guys is we're going to change this railway line over here this part of the track over here and this is going to be basically a spur and we're going to turn the railway track like a points and now if the train was coming down the track it would make a a straight left turn here if you're a right-hander so I've got this angulation here and, and the difference between that angle and there is about 45 degrees now that's for me it may be 50 for you it may be 30 maybe 35 you've got to work that out but that's the difference and once I've established that there guys and I'm here uh, and again and I'm doing this in really simplistic terms <coughs> Okay, I'm aimed way over here. Now, if I, if, I, if I swing the club here, I'm going to hit the ball way over there because my shoulders are aiming over there. So in order to get back on the target, which is there, I've got to get my shoulders there. I'll do it this way. Here we are here, guys. The, the foot's here. Club's back here. If I'm lined up on the ball there with that trail foot there, I turn these feet here, step away. This is the angle line here. That's the ball line. The difference between that, that, that straight line there and this one is 45 degrees. There it is there. That, that's the alignment of my body and that's the alignment of the target. So if, if, I, if I just kept my shoulders in that position there and tried to hit the ball, I'd hit it 45 degrees left, whatever that is in yards. So in order to compensate for that, guys, I have to, to bring my shoulders back from here to there. Now my shoulders are back on that railway line. The hips were on the spur before, and the shoulders were on that spur before, but now we brought them back to here. And I know what you're saying, so, well, J.S., why would you bring them back from there? Why, why go to all the trouble of being over there? This is the reason, guys. If I'm parallel here, one railway track, one railway track. If I'm parallel there, and I step away here, now the only way I can get to that ball and be in the channel, the locked-in channel, is that I've got to cock my shoulders to for me being a right-hander to the right. I've got to cock them to the right. That's the only way I can get in that channel over here to the, to the right of my body, to the right of the trail side. That's the only way I can get the club over here into that channel. If I don't, if I don't, if I don't cock my shoulders around there and I just, and I, and I just swing the, the club from there, I'm going to have my hands way forward. No, I'll show you here. Okay, front on. If I just play the ball, it's not about just playing it back there 
like a normal back position with a normal golf swing and having your hands here guys it's not about that because because that's that's just going to hit low balls and that's not where we want to be and it's really hard to hit to the trail side in a conventional swing when you've got everything over here like this and you've got the hands forward you can't do that you can't hit up and down this trail axis because everything's over here so if I'm lined up on my two railway lines here and I wanted to hit from the channel I've got to turn my shoulders here into the channel <laughs> now as soon as I do that from a parallel position here I'm aiming 45 yards right that's a compensatory move that we have to make we have to go from there to here and we do it simplistically with both feet together we just turn the heels step away and there we are now our channel is here guys it's to to the right of the trail side for a right-handed person that's why we've got to get back here that's all the reasons for having to make these these compensatory moves you just can't get back there otherwise and of course when we do make that move there we haven't got our hands over here they haven't taken all the loft off the club they're basically here look I can just get in here guys so that I know it's it's very very difficult to comprehend here and when I when I put the thing together for a commercial uh, venture it'll all be explained diagrammatically from above all types of things and I will have video done from above showing the angles and there'll be lines drawn and all types of things so this is just very very early stages you guys are actually seeing the evolution of this golf swing before it goes commercial and this is the development phase Now the other thing I wanted to, to mention, once we've, once we've gone 45 degrees left, balls on that angle there, the feeling guys is this, that if you had a ribbon down there, down that, down that ball line which is to the target, and this was a Japanese samurai katana sword, and you had it here, what we're doing here is we're bringing that sword straight across that that ribbon there right angles and cutting it that's the feeling we're just going straight across that line that's the feeling you won't do that but that will be the feeling that you want to propagate because if you propagate that feeling you will be in the channel here now the club will have to to arc in some manner because the swing is an arcing process we want to feel it straight lining the, the feeling guys is straight line from here to there is straight line not like in a conventional golf swing from here we're coming down and we're arcing around back to the ball and then over here so it's a big arcing type move this is not an arcing type move as a feel there's a bit of arc in it but the feel is straight line absolutely straight line when we get here straight line straight line now a couple of people have asked me where the where the tension points are and the pressure points are depending on the width of your your stance when I turn it around here guys I feel pressure in here in that in that knee there and on the outside there and on the inside thigh and a little bit on the inside of the of the lead knee they're my pressure points because I've cocked all this around and I feel a lot in the ankle too you can move that foot out there to relieve pressure if you want to take some pressure off the off the knee and the ankle if you want to and the the groin area it's up to you I'm pretty flexible there so I can well as flexible as I can be at my age it's it doesn't hurt me that much I can put up with that so you, you, can, you, can, you can work that foot after you've gone here you can work that foot back to here or you can put it back to there you know, if you put it back to there it's a little bit easier to get the backswing going now the other thing guys clearly if we've gone from square here and we turn here and our shoulders were square here 
there and we turn to here the shoulders are now pointing over here but as soon as I back cock the shoulders I've turned them half of the backswing requirements in a 90 degree shoulder turn I've turned them 45 degrees then all I've got to do from there guys is just turn them another 45 <laughs> so I'm already halfway into the backswing at a dress in this golf swing that's a good thing so you've only got a little a little backswing to go you've only got a 40 degree 45 degree addition to your address position backswing to apply so that's good we don't have to go like a conventional golf swing we've got to take this shoulder from here way over to here we don't have to do that now one of the guys said that he hit some drivers and <clears throat> you know they were just flat sort of snap pulls over to here well guys that can only happen that can only happen if this trail shoulder gets out of the channel if, it, if it's straight lining towards the ball like that the golf club's got to go that way guys <laughs> it can't go that way the only way it goes that way is if this, if this lead shoulder starts to roll and takes the trail shoulder with it and then you can get that and if you fall back this way now we want to we want to st we wanna, don't want to fall back but we want to stay on this trail we want to tr stay on this trail axis here we want to get here and we want to stay on it here when we hit it I want to look like that when I've hit it because that means I've, I've, I've swung past that trail side and that trail axis that vertical axis that whole trail side has supported the arm hit into the ball and the shoulder girdle has remained closed into the golf ball how much closed it is again is a, pre a personal thing and how much you can release the club and how much club face you've got shut down the, te the guys the the the, uh, the test procedure is how much uh, to shut your club face down or open it or whatever is where the ball goes if you're just hitting this and you hit it straight right because the, the swing path is always in or out on this 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 process or this method you've just got to close the face down a little bit so you'll start it right and then it'll come back with the draw spin conversely if it goes too far left if, if, if it basically starts right and then really really gets left a bit too early um, then you've clearly got the club face shut down too much but what I find is that that can't happen because once I go from here to there and that club face now is pointing at, at the target there when I backload invariably as I backload what I, what I try and do to keep the club pointed at the target and I'm going to be coming into out and if the, if the club face is pointing at the target I'm going to get a push draw what you don't want to do anybody who gets a push on this swing it could be from this reason once when, when we go here and that club face is pointing at the target as it was supposed to be here if we backload and we've got hold of the golf club as we backload we'll tend to open the face so what I do is I, do, I have the grip loose and as I backload I'm not hanging onto the club I'm just letting my hands turn and the club face is staying there and then I just grip it I just turn here and then just grip the club but if I hang onto it and then backload I'm opening the face these are all the little intricate things that you have to have to be aware of and the things that will help you shape the ball the way you want to shape it now someone else said that they actually shanked a couple of drives well guys the only way we can shank a ball conventionally conventionally it, it, you know, a shank is when the club is coming from outside the line and we connect the the ball with the heel of the club now if you're shanking a drive and if you had to had a ball back have the ball back a long way in your stance and you just move this way a little bit with the ball that far back in the stance the clubs going to go this way guys it's going to go it's this is just elementary geometry if it's way back here 
and I, and I start down and this lead shoulder just moves that way a little bit, takes the trail shoulder with it, and the club then is outside the channel and it's coming this way, guys. So with a, with a way back ball position, a club outside the line going that way, that's Shank City every day of the week. You can only shank it if you give up on keeping the shoulders closed. And the thing that keeps the shoulders closed is the five o'clock nose. Hardest thing I've had to do in this golf swing is really commit to that five o'clock nose. That's the difference between 100% contact and 90% contact, is the five o'clock nose. I don't get over it because I've got enough in my golf swing, normally with my shut shoulders in my normal golf swing, to, to never get over the golf ball from this, from this position here. And the channel lock for me is already conditioned and, and, and applied, so I'm never going to get over it. But the five o'clock nose, guys, is just so important. Now, I think about the five... I, I, after I've gone here and I do back cock, I think five o'clock nose, five o'clock nose, really, and I still think five o'clock nose here. And I promise you guys, the difference between the ball strike with five o'clock nose really applied is amazing. That famous story of Hogan and Al Barco, that famous rider, he was a friend of Hogan's, and, and he said, I want to know the secret. And, and, he, and Hogan said, well, come to lunch tomorrow, and I'll tell you. So they went to lunch at um, Shady Oaks and um, they finished lunch and, uh, and he hadn't told Al Barco and Al Barco said to him, well Ben, what's the secret? You said you were going to tell me. And he said, I can't tell you here with all these people. He said, come in the locker room. So they went outside to the locker room and, and Hogan was there and, and, and Al Barco, he said, pick up that club there and he said, okay. And Barco said, well what is it Ben? He said, okay, take your address. And Ben Barco took his address and he said, yeah, okay. He said, turn your head to the right as far as you can. And Barco went over here and he said, okay, okay, I'm here. What else? And, he, and Hogan, just as Al was looking down here, Hogan said, there isn't anything else. That's it. That's the secret. And Hogan was, and when Barco looked up, he said Hogan was walking out. And Hogan said, there isn't anything else. That's the secret. And if you look at Hogan, I mean Hogan, <laughs> in his standard swing, this is Hogan. So Hogan had a lot of five o'clock nose in his golf swing. I mean, whether that was Hogan's secret or not, who knows. But Al Barco was actually scathing of Hogan, and as, as you know, if you've ever seen that story of Barco's, he, um, he said Hogan um, never told anybody the secret, but that's what he did to him. So he obviously had that in his thinking, that that, that five o'clock nose was important even for him. But for him to say that was a total secret, I think that was a furphy. But it was clearly an important part. Maybe not the, the entire secret, but part of the secret. <clears throat> but for me, guys, I tell you, it is absolutely super important. And I've had difficulty with it. When I get here, sequence, back cock, five o'clock nose, and I want to be five o'clock nose. I actually want to be, you know, behind six o'clock if I can. Because if I, if I think six o'clock, I'll get four o'clock, which is where I want to be. But I don't want to come up to two o'clock or one o'clock. Because just that little bit, guys, just that little bit turning of the nose and the chin unlocks this and takes it out of the channel lock swing path. If you watch this, if I just fire my arms down there, and these shoulders stay here, look, it's a direct path to the ball. It's just a direct path to the ball, here. Now what happens here if I just move that shoulder just a bit? Look at the path. The path is outside the ball. And if I move it a lot, here, <laughs> it's there. The club will come across and hit me in this other ankle here and the ball will go up here and hit these people up here. So that's how important the five o'clock nose is. So they are very important points, guys. Very important points. Okay. Now they're, they're all aspects and points, and I've I had a couple of other things, but I've forgotten them. But I'll just take a break, and I'll come back, and I'll hit some shots, and maybe with this angle here, I'll hit some shots this way, and maybe you can see that the angle's better, and uh, and the clearance, and what I'm doing with my my lines, if I can make that a little bit more um, obvious to you visually. I'll come back. <laughs> 